What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Trench Grenade channel. I'm your host, your average ambush enjoyer that your mom said that we have at home. Thanks for watching guys. Today I'm going to teach you how to conduct an ambush. Now, I got to preface this. This is going to be for Minecraft purposes only, of course. This is not me telling you to go out and do this in real life. This is just for entertainment purposes only. This is not legal advice or anything like that. This is just for Minecraft, okay? So let me just preface that right off the bat. Um, I'll tell you my background. I have uh, over a decade of active duty infantry experience, which most of that uh, being as a paratrooper. So why I tell, I tell you that to tell you this. I've done this uh, a ton of time in training and I've practiced and done this a lot, okay? Um, so that is my background of knowledge. A lot of this you can reference in the Ranger Handbook, okay? Uh, or the Rifle and Platoon Doctrine, okay? It's all public information, but I'm gonna teach it to you so that way you can re hopefully retain it and utilize it if you ever have to in Minecraft. Good to go? Before I get too deep into it, you already know what's coming. If every single person watching this video right now hit the like button, it would do me, uh, it would be awesome, okay? Because if every single person hits the like button, that means there's some dude out there that has not found the channel yet, and if you hit the like button, guess what that's gonna do? That's gonna tell the algorithm god that all the dudes that are just like you that haven't found my tiny channel, well, guess what? They're gonna get a notification to come watch this video on how to conduct an ambush, okay? So thank you for hitting the like button. Leave a comment, please leave a comment down below of how many uh, Minecraft server or what you would do in your Minecraft server. We'll put it like that. Tell me about your Minecraft server and how you would conduct the ambush in your Minecraft server. Okay, I think y'all get what I'm saying. Last but not least, Instagram. If you wanna see all the lifting content behind the scenes, check out the Instagram. Uh, that'll help me stay connected to you guys and the Patreon. The Patreon is $5 a month and gets you guys access to a Discord server with roughly a 470 to 500 dudes, okay, uh, that they game, they link up for training, stuff like that. If you want to be a member of our community, consider uh, doing the $5 thing. It's like less than a cup of coffee a month, right? And then it helps me stay motivated to stand here and teach you guys about how to conduct an ambush. All right, with all that out of the way, ambush, ambush should be conducted uh, with a platoon size. It should never be conducted as a squad. As I go through this video, you're gonna realize why. Never do an ambush with a squad, okay? So it should be a platoon minimum. Uh, some prerequisites for the ambush. You're gonna have to have uh, a recon of the area or a recon of the, the zone that you wanna conduct the ambush in. I'm gonna, t I'm gonna break it down step by step. If at any point during this video you get lost or confused, I'm going to try to talk slowly, which I have a problem doing sometimes when I get really fired up and I'm really adamant about a topic, I'll start to talk really quick. So I'm going to try to talk slowly. I'm going to try to talk it through step by step. Uh, we'll take protein drinks, uh, protein drink breaks, because I just did finish my uh, chest and triceps, so I do need to be uh, drinking my protein. And yeah, we're just going to go through it, guys. If you, if you have questions, post them down below. All right, first things first. What we're going to have to establish with our platoon is going to be an ORP. An ORP is an objective rally point, or it is simply where we are going to stage our rucksacks, our heavy bags, any unnecessary equipment is going to be left in the objective rally point. I'm going to do a separate video on patrol base establishment and objective rally point establishment. But what you need to know, guys, is in Saving Private Ryan, when they're all, when uh, they're, they find the German machine gun position on the hill and the Sergeant First Class says, I think we should go around them. And the, the commander, the captain, uh, I don't remember the actor's name off the top of my head, Tom Hanks. When Tom Hanks says, uh, no, we want to take the machine gun, when they're all like dumping all their extra gear at the bottom of the hill, that is kind of like an ORP, um, but they didn't have security established and it wasn't really an ORP, but it's just kind of an example for you guys to think about. If you don't have, you have no idea what an ORP is, it's just where you prep man weapon and equipment okay so you're going to prep prepare your your ammunition you're going to get any extra fragmentation grenades and smoke grenades out of your bag you're going to get any extra mortar shells prepared all the stuff that you might need and you're going to leave all the excess you're going to leave like your sleeping system uh all the excess stuff that you don't need you don't need food all you're bringing with you is bullets water and grenades okay so first we're going to establish our orp the second thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, the key leader on the ground. So in this case, the platoon leader and the assault squad leader and the assault lead team leader at a minimum, plus a couple of riflemen. Guys, I'm just going to break it down as simple as I can. The patrol leader plus the assault squad leader are going to go on a leader's recon. 
okay? Leader's recon. They're gonna go up, they can do one of two methods. They can either clover leaf, okay? Clover leaf just looks like they go to a spot, and they go to a spot, they go to a spot. Or if they're pressed for time, they can do a recon of the area and go to where they think they want to establish the assault line. They're gonna recon that assault line and try to identify lanes. This is a road, by the way, that the enemy is gonna be, that we think the enemy is gonna be traveling on. So we're gonna go to the assault line, the tentative assault line, okay? Um, and we're gonna literally, we're gonna recon it. We're gonna see if there's gonna be good lanes that we can actually use, okay? After we recon the tentative assault line, then we're gonna recon a tentative support by fire position. Okay, support by fire, or in this case, we'll just call it support. The support position is going to be in an area where they can effectively engage. This is an L-shaped ambush. So what I wanna do, the support by fire is gonna be over here so that way they can effectively engage down this long axis. I guess I'll draw it a little bit better here for you guys. Okay, the support is gonna be down this long axis. I'm not gonna to get too much into enfilade and all the different types of machine gun theory, but all for in layman's terms, you want your support by fire on this part of the L, okay, of the L-shaped ambush. You want them to be able to engage down the entire uh, road or work, the linear danger area in this particular case, a linear danger area is a road. You want them to be able to engage down and you want Wherever you're wanting to engage the enemy, you want that to be within the effective uh, the effective capabilities of the weapon system. Okay, so if you're rocking AR-15s, the farthest away you want is 500 meters. You don't want them to be outside of 500 meters because that is outside of the point area engagement for the weapon systems on your support by fire. Most of you will be rocking AR-15s, so. 500 meters, preferably closer, okay? But 500 meters should be the farthest spot where you would want to initiate the ambush. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. All right, after the key leaders recon the tentative support by fire, then they are gonna establish security positions. What this is called is ass forwards and ass backwards. Assault support security and security support assault. We're gonna recon the tentative security positions the triangles will be the tentative security positions securities security positions are not only going to protect your support by fire squad and your assault squad they are also going to be there in case the enemy survives the ambush they will be out here security security okay and security they are there this security team is going to be, it's going to be two people per security team, okay? So a whole squad, at least on the assault line, so nine people, a whole squad on the support by fire, and two people per security position. This security position, the triangle, is going to defend the ORP. Why? Because the ORP is where we dropped off all of our extra stuff. Remember we talked about that? So these two guys are going to defend the ORP, and they're going to have security to the rear so no one comes up and tries to kill you from the rear. This security team is going to be the one that spots the enemy, okay? Also, if the, once the enemy is engaged, their job is to kill the enemy if, once they try to get out of the ambush, okay? They're going to kill the squirters is what we call it, okay? That's what these two's job is. These two, and obviously right side, right flank security as well. This security position, these two guys, their job is after all these bad guys get freaking absolutely just lit up by the support by fire, assaulted through anyone that survives and runs away, well, these two guys are going to smoke them and they're also responsible for left side security. All right, so all we've done so far, just to summarize all we've done so far, if you're confused, we've the whole platoon is still down here. All 40 dudes are still down here, okay? The key leader, the platoon leader went up, they reconned the assault line. After we recon the assault line, that is called pinpointing the objective. So he's going to call back to his platoon sergeant on the radio. Hey, platoon dad, I have pinpointed the assault line. I have pinpointed the objective. None of this can happen unless that platoon leader identifies where you're going to actually conduct the ambush or pinpointing the objective. Okay, you better remember that. I'm going to I'm going to do a poll on that question, okay, on like the discussion post. 
So the platoon leader has pinpointed the assault line, okay? Then he went to the tentative support by fire and reconned that, okay? And then he went to each security position to make sure uh, that there are tenable positions for security to be established. Key note here, the platoon leader can bring with him a couple riflemen to in place at each position if he chooses. Now, in order to do that, he's going to have to establish a gatwa. A gatwa is simply telling the people in the patrol base before he leaves, the platoon leader is going to say, going, where am I going? Others going with me, time that I'll be gone, what to do if I don't return in time, and actions on contact. So, gatwa. I'll just write it out. G-O-T-W-A. The platoon leader must give everybody, all 40 people, or at least the key leaders, he needs to disseminate a gatwa. I'm going on a leader's recon. Others going with me are these individuals. Time that I'll be, right? And this is where you do a time check. It is 1546. If I'm not back by X time, then that's where the W comes in. What to do if I don't return? Are you going to come to me or am I going to come to you? Okay. And for what to do, you could say, give me another 10 minutes and then head back to base. That means I've probably been killed or captured. Well, then actions on contact, the A. That simply means if I get in contact with the enemy, either you come to me or I'm coming to you. The key note here is after the platoon leader tells everybody or tells the key leaders in the ORP, they are going to say it back to them. They're going to repeat everything back to them in the GATWA. That is, that is crucial, okay? So GATWA, that is crucial. So the platoon leader went up, they reconned the assault line. They can leave two people there if they want. That's called RNS, one facing the road and one facing the six. That way, or you can mark it with a chem light or you can mark it with a VS-17 panel. You can, you can mark it in some form or fashion. Same thing over here. He can leave two people there if he wants to, to keep that position, right? One facing to the, the road and one facing to the six with their feet uh, in the prone with their feet overlapping. He can do that at every position. Typically, typically, the platoon leader will bring with him the security personnel. So that way, when he recons the assault line, recons the support by fire, and when he gets to the first security position, he can leave those two people there. So in this particular case, the platoon leader, let's say he left those two, they're already there. They have a radio. They have to have some form of communication for the security. He leaves the security team in place. He comes back. He leaves the security team in place over here, or, and then he leaves the security team in place over here. So at this point, we have conducted a leader's recon of all the positions. Every security group is already in place, and the platoon leader will then head back to the objective rally point. Key note here, before the platoon leader gets back to the objective rally point, he needs to do a far recognition and a near recognition. That is so the platoon leader and the returning members of the platoon don't get absolutely fucking smoked by their own people, okay? So far recognition and near recognition signal. What that can look like is, hey, we're coming back on the radio, and then they acknowledge, okay, you're coming back. And then before you get too close, hey, we're coming in, or you can IR flash them at night with your nods, okay? Sending an IR signal using a number combination. That way, the members of your own platoon don't absolutely smoke you, okay? So I'm going to take a drink. I want you guys to think about everything, whatever questions you have. All we've conducted so far is a leader's recon and the emplacement of the security personnel. And now when the platoon leader gets back, he can disseminate the information. He can pull out a map. He can pull out his phone. He can pull out whatever he's got to show them exactly where we're going to conduct this ambush at. Cheers, guys. Take a drink of your protein or whatever. If you're getting confused, just post down below. We'll call this phase one, Leaders Recon. If you have questions up to phase one, just post them down below. Also, I'm definitely not going to edit this, so uh, yeah, just bear with me. Okay, so Leaders Recon has been conducted. At this point, we did our far, near and far recognition. We got back to the ORP. Security teams are in place. Now what are we going to do? Now we're going to pick up and I'm going to bring... Uh, the, the platoon leader, I say me, the platoon leader is going to bring the members of the support by fire, the weapon squad, right? If you don't have M240s, hopefully you have M249s. If you don't have M249 saws, hopefully you have 
a ton of mags, like 15 mags per dude, at least on this support by fire squad. The platoon leader will leave the ORP and they will go straight back out to the support by fire. He will emplace the support by fire and he will give him engagement criteria. What that means is I do not want you to engage unless it's a whole enemy's team, a whole enemy squad. He'll give the squad leader on the support by fire the engagement criteria. He will also give them a time to initiate if we're planning on an element coming through and we have ISR that has found the enemy. Well, we're, he'll tell them what time to engage. That way everybody is coordinated and knows. And he'll tell them a pace plan. Pace is primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency for communications. All that means is he's going to tell that squad leader on the support by fire what he needs to know to be successful so we can get the killing done in Minecraft. After he places the support by fire, he's going to do his near and far recognition. If he wanted to, he could have staged the assault squad right here. He could have staged them over here. That way when he comes back, he doesn't have to move all the way back to the ORP. The key thing here is people in your platoon having positive identification and knowing where each other are because there's going to be a lot of moving pieces. This is typically one of the hardest evaluations to do in the infantry. As hard as evaluation to pass is, is L-shaped ambush because it's a very complicated mission. So securities are in place. Support by fire is in place. They have their uh, uh, their specific instructions of when we're going to conduct the killing or what uh, engagement criteria there's going to be for the objective for when the enemy comes through on this road. Then the platoon leader will go over, pick up the assault squad, and then place the assault squad in their lanes. Okay, so now every every member of the platoon is now in either their support. You know, the whole squad of support by fire is there. The whole squad on the assault line is there. Then all of the members on the battle buddy teams, two person teams, are in each of these security positions. Now, guess what we're going to do? Now they're just going to wait. Before they went out, the platoon sergeant, okay, the senior NCO on the ground, or the senior person on the ground, um, that's not the platoon leader, okay? The platoon sergeant gave guidance to the squad leaders. Hey, no less than 50% security. All that means is one in every two can be awake, that, or one in every three, whatever percent security that you're going to have, that way... You can have guys resting and guys watching. To tell you about security, I have to tell you about something else. That way you can actually do this effectively. One tap on your buddies, so with your boot on their boot or your hand on them, one tap means are you awake, okay? Obviously, if they're supposed to be sleeping, then you're not gonna do that. But one tap means are you awake? Two tap means I think I hear something or see something. Okay, so one tap, are you awake? Two tap, I think I hear something or see something. Three taps, what do you think three taps means? One, two, three, I fucking see something. I definitely hear something. We are about to take contact. That is the tap system, okay? So every member of the platoon is in their designated spot. If you're confused, we'll call that phase two, emplacement for the comment section. So up to phase two, if you have questions about emplacement, ask them, say, Trench, I have questions about phase two. I'm confused about the emplacement of the platoon in their actual positions. Phase three, this is where it's gonna get wild. We'll call this the action phase, okay? Phase three, we'll use the appropriate color. We'll say we have an enemy squad coming down the road, okay? They're in whatever position, but they're coming down the road. We would have established a certain area where when they get to this spot, Support by fire is going to initiate. This is going to be where the killing happens, okay, in Minecraft. Support by fire is going to initiate for a mad minute typically. That means for one minute, not to insult anyone's intelligence, they are going to freaking burn some ammo. Even if you think they are engaged, you're going to do what's called target overmatch, okay? So support by fire is going to do the killing. At that same point, the assault, okay? So support by fire is doing the killing. After the mad minute, we're gonna call a shift fire. I'll use red, no I won't, I'll use green. We're gonna call shift fire left. All that means is the support by fire is going to shift their fire left. Now, one key note I forgot to say, obviously the security team here would have radioed the platoon leader to let them know the enemy was coming. 
So that's why the security team is out here. Same thing for here. If the security team was coming from this way, they would have radioed. They would not engage. That is not their job. Their job is not to shoot. Okay. Even to this point, their job is not to shoot. Now, back to this. So we shift fire left after our mad minute of killing. At that point, the assault squad is going to begin engaging. They're going to do what's called a battlefield handoff. The assault squad will then begin their engaging on the enemy. Okay, so if there's a bunch of dudes moaning and groaning, well, they're going to finish the fight. Then, after they finish the fight, the assault squad leader with the platoon leader, it's going to be the platoon leader is not going to be in control. It's going to be the assault squad leader, the staff sergeant, or whoever the squad leader is of the, of the assault squad, he or she will be in charge. The platoon leader will not be in charge. They're just overseeing the entire thing. They're making sure everyone's doing their job. So after we get the shift fire left, where the swarp by fire is now shifted off into the wood line because whoever survived this, they're going to be out there, so they're freaking doing the work there. The assault squad will then pick up, and they will just assault. Remember the lanes we talked about? So every little rifleman will have like his own little lane, okay? So the assault squad will pick up, and they will assault through, and they will hit their LOA, limit of advance. They will all echo it. As they're going across, the platoon leader will call to the support by fire, uh, lift fire, lift fire, lift fire. Lift fire simply means stop freaking shooting. Okay? That way we don't kill our own people, right? So that's imperative. So after you get to your uh, last covered and concealed position, you need to stop your support by fire from shooting. The second the support by fire gets the lift fire, lift fire, lift fire, what they're going to do is start breaking down off the tripods, okay? So if you're up on tripod, you're going to break down one gun at a time to bipod. That is the implied task for this support by fire squad leader. If you don't have machine guns, then what you're going to do is you're going to start packing up. One guy packs up, the other guy holds security. So you're just packing up all those empty magazines because you probably just dumped like 50, like 10 magazines on the enemy, okay? If you're using rifles because you would have cross-loaded. The assault squad would have gave you more magazines because you're going to be doing more of the killing. Anyway, so they're packing up. Once the, the assault squad leader hits their LOA, they're all going to uh, sound off with LOA, LOA, LOA. They're going to reestablish security. Then the assault squad leader will send his EPW search, enemy prisoner of war search team, to go search these combatants. It's going to be one guy covering and one guy searching. Okay, we're not going to get too deep into that now, but you're going to do EPW search on the co enemy combatants, pulling whatever uh intel you can or anything you need off the enemy okay that's where you're gonna pull up pull, pull whatever intel you need if you if you can you'll pull magazines if you have common uh cartridges okay you can pull magazines that are full um off the enemy but you're in a hurry you're only gonna have a couple minutes maybe two to three minutes tops after those epw get back you'll do aid and litter if you have no friendly casualties aid and litter complete this is where it's going to get crazy so that was phase three the action phase. Now we're going to get into phase four, the withdrawal phase. If you have questions up until this point, uh, that was phase three. Now we're going to get into phase four. Phase four. Remember how we said ass and ass or ass backwards and ass forwards. Remember assault, support, security, security, support, assault. Okay. Well, now we're going to do, we in place ass backwards. Remember, because we did security, support, then we in place assault for putting people in position. Well, now we're going to withdraw ass. Okay. So assault's going to withdraw then support, and then security. The reason being is, obviously, set piece, move piece. Assault pulls back to the ORP. Everyone's going straight back to the ORP, okay? Preferably on a dog leg. So if they're going this way, then they're gonna break and break. That way they're not going straight back in. So they're gonna say, uh, red, 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 red. Red, 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 red simply means the assault squad is pulling back. The assault squad's gonna haul ass back to the ORP using their dog legs so they don't get straight into the or, or don't lead the enemy that's if the enemy's following them they don't lead them back into the orp then we're going to do blue blue or white 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 uh if this is your code right so red assault pulled back uh white 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 okay support is pulling back same thing they're going to use a dog leg going back into the orp the moment these individuals or these squads get back into the orp the objective rally point they're putting all their gear back on immediately battle buddy team up one guy puts his gear on one guy pulled security and then blue 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 security teams will pull back in okay so now everybody is back in to the orp 
You'll do what's called seals, stop, look, listen, smell. Hand and arm signal is this. Seals complete. All, all your stop, look, listening, and smelling for is the enemy. You'll pack up all your gear. It should already be packed up because you never leave your ORP looking bad. You always leave it packed up. You get there, you pick up all your stuff, and you get out of there. Okay? All right. Guys, that completes phase four, the withdrawal plan. Remember, in summary, leaders recon. Platoon leader is going to do a recon of all positions, starting with assault, support, then security. He's going to typically emplace the security personnel on the leader's recon. Then you're going to bring up your support by fire. Then you're going to bring up your assault. Then you're going to conduct your ambush. After your ambush, you're going to withdraw. The way your withdrawal is going to work is assault, then support, then security, using red, white, blue as code words. So you can just yell out, red, 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 and everyone knows red means assault's pulling back. White means support's pulling back, and blue means security's pulling back. Once you get to the ORP, stop, look, listen, smell. Guess what you're going to do then? After that, you're going to bounce. You're going to bounce back to base, or you're going to get guidance for further mission. Guys, if you enjoy this content, please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel. Give me a comment down below. Give me something. Even if you're just like, I don't know what to put, give me a cowboy emoji. Give me something, guys. Thanks for being here. Consider, if you enjoy this content, consider becoming a member of the Patreon. It's only $5 a month and keeps me, keeps me motivated to keep making stuff like this. Guys, thanks for being here. It's the holiday season. Make sure you reach out to a buddy. Uh, make sure they're doing good, okay? Make sure they're doing all right. Uh, the holidays can be tough for some people. Um, so just re make sure you reach out to a buddy. In summary, guys, this is how you conduct an ambush, an L-shape ambush specifically, on uh, an enemy in Minecraft. All right, guys, until next time, this is going to be Trench Grenade, your average ambush enjoyer, signing out. Cheers.